Hello everybody, welcome back to Norwich Talk for another video. In today's video we're going to have a little bit of a chat, and when I say a little bit of a chat, I do mean a fairly brief one um, about Max Aarons and Barcelona, because I've, you know, it's been doing the rounds on Twitter of course, it's sort of split opinion between Norwich fans and general football fans, um, not Norwich fans within themselves. I think we can all pretty much agree on the circumstance and the fact that this, this whole thing is being blown well out of proportion. Um, and when I say that, I mean... There's this idea that Norwich City are sort of denying Max Aarons his dream move to Barcelona or a dream move to Barcelona in the same sort of fashion that they did for Jamal Lewis in Liverpool. And it's really frustrating. And now I think it's easier for me to say this as a Norwich City fan because I don't want to see one of our better players leave. But they aren't. They quite simply aren't. And I think some people seem to have forgotten the way football works, mainly because there's not the emotion of losing one of your better players, of course, which makes it easier. Um, perhaps maybe uh, the Norwich City perspective is slightly distorted um, because they don't want one of our better players to leave. Who knows? But I genuinely don't think they are. Um, it really annoys me as well because it makes Norwich out to be some sort of like devil club that are making these youngsters stay against their will when in reality they're the club who've developed them, um, given them this opportunity to play on the platform that they've been playing on. Um, and I, I'm not saying they should be grateful and stay, but I'm saying that Norwich City are this club who give young players a chance to actually play. Um, Daniel Farker is a head coach who shows so much um, sort of trust in them, in players, and he really does look to sort of exhaust the maximum potential um, of a player. And I think Jamal Lewis did that at Norwich, hence why he left. And you compare sort of his eight million pound or his touted eight million pound, ten million pound, whatever it was, potential move to Liverpool compared to his fifteen million pound move to a team like Newcastle. Now, from a business perspective, which is what football is these days, of course, um, as painful as it is to admit, football's a business. Norwich did the sensible thing. They sold the player to the team who were willing to pay the most money, which is as simple as that, really. I don't understand this whole denying him of a dream move. Now, with Jamal Lewis specifically, I know this is a Max Aaron's video, but I think it's sort of relevant to the point. Um, with Jamal Lewis, he's going to play every week at Newcastle. Now, I, today I did see him get that sort of boot to the face, which was just horrendous from um, whatever the Brighton player was called. But he's going to play every week at Newcastle, whereas at Liverpool he wouldn't have. He would have been the understudy to Andy Robertson, um, which isn't a bad thing. Being coached by one of the world's best managers is, you know, it's, it's a pretty decent thing. And it's Jurgen Klopp, and I think we can all sort of agree that there is sort of this general like for Jurgen Klopp because, again, like Daniel Farker, he shows a lot of um, trust in younger players. I say he does spend a lot of money, but people do like Jurgen Klopp. That's just a fact. And as, for as much as that would have been interesting and sort of maybe beneficial for Jamal Lewis, that the best and most important lessons are taught on a football pitch and by playing games. Um, and he wouldn't have done that at Liverpool. He would have played a, a handful of games. And for a player as young as him, with as much potential as he has, um, it just wouldn't have done him any good. Which is where I think Norwich City are looking at the Max Aaron situation. He's not going to play at Barcelona, is he? I, I don't really think he is. And sort of the main thing, I say the main thing, the second main thing, there's a lot of main things, um, is that the, the offer that Barcelona offered was a bit of a joke, wasn't it? It was this sort of loan option. Uh, it, was a, it was a season-long loan without the option or the obligation to buy, which is just a bit like, so you want us to give you one of your one of our best players um, in return for you, sort of giving him, having him for a season and thinking right um, I, I like him I don't like him and then give him back if you don't it's just it's utterly ridiculous um, and it boggles the mind to be honest with you it's a very sort of big team thing to do now I don't really have a problem with Barcelona doing that I do have a problem with football fans kicking up a fuss acting like Norwich City are holding um, Max Aaron's ransom against his will because I, I don't think they are. I think it's quite evident that Max Aarons is happy to sort of crack on here and he seems to have his head screwed on which leads me to believe that he's very much aware of another season at Norwich City isn't the end of his career. He's only 20 years old. He's got a good 10, 15 years left in the tank and everybody says um, a footballer's career is short and yeah, perhaps you're right but at the same time this guy is so young and he's already so, so good. But yeah, I just, I honestly find it sort of weird and I don't really get it because I just I don't understand how people don't see that Norwich City is this club who develops and trusts these young players and sort of picks them off the platform that they were on, puts them onto a higher one, gives them better opportunities. Um, I think the sort of the idea of Norwich doing that has maybe gone under the radar a little bit as of late um, with players like Jamal Lewis and, and Max Aaron's. No doubt Ben Godfrey will be linked to a big club sometime soon, um, and he'll be sort of the next name to be thrown around. Todd Cantwell, another one as well. But yeah, I, I, it just honestly blows my mind. But if you actually look at the rumour, I think the rumour sums up 2020. It's such a bizarre rumour. The fact that one, Norwich City um, uh, declining a bid from Barcelona, but two, it's a season-long loan, um, and also just the general sort of 
um, atmosphere around the transfer and this idea they are literally just trying to take our or one of our better players and just sort of see whether they like him or not and if they don't they'd send him back um, and I, I definitely think that if Barcelona had an obligation to buy at the end of the loan which sort of then begs the question why not just buy him now um, then I think Stuart Webber would have accepted the bid if it was high enough because for as much as we want to keep these prize assets for as much as we want to see them sort of develop at Norwich City everybody has them as a price and if that's matched um, met matched exceeded then that player will leave the club because as I said um, and it's something that's incredibly well known football is a business these days but they're my thoughts on the whole Max Aarons thing I just sort of wanted to get them out there because it's really frustrating now usually I'm sort of pretty good um, at turning my cheek at these sort of things when it comes to Norwich City sort of being insulted um, you look at TalkSport's tweet or arc or whatever they did um, I dare read it because I just hate TalkSport uh, as I'm sure I think many people do it is really toxic and I really don't like it at all um, and again they were sort of banging the drum of we're holding Max Aaron's hostage pretty much and it's just like Jesus Christ guys let's get our priorities straight here let's sort of focus on something that's a little bit more interesting that's a little bit more prevalent within football at the moment god knows what that is but i certainly know it's not norwich city rejecting a pathetic bid from barcelona um you laugh at it sort of admire it in terms of its pure randomness but let's not sort of get on norwich city's backs in terms of saying that they're literally holding this place hostage because they're not at the end of the day are they um a little bit of head loss for me there but i'm sure we can all agree um if you don't agree i'll be very keen to know your thoughts in the comments down below we have got a podcast coming out tomorrow uh, me alfie and stuart hodge alfie britcher of the revere i should say um sit down to rate norwich city's summer signings now that video was filmed two weeks ago now so it's before the season actually kicked off I think it was after the Luton game actually um, but that will be why we don't reference Preston and, and why we don't reference um, the other game what was it Huddersfield um, sadly I couldn't make a, a match reaction to, to her Preston sorry because I was watching Deerham again I had iFollow set up on my iPad and stuff I had the code but it didn't seem to want to work which is really annoying um, but at the same time I don't think I really missed too much and just a quick positive spin on that game I'm seeing a lot of people say um, that Norwich City were quite poor. I'm equally seeing that Norwich were very resilient and I want to take that side in terms of this idea of let's put a positive spin on it maybe and the fact that Norwich were pretty poor but they still managed to squeeze a point out of the game where considering, um, if I'd have said to you, right, Norwich will play terribly but maybe squeeze a couple of points at the end of last season, I'd have bitten your hand off and Norwich City are doing it now. There's a huge shift in momentum at the club. Let's not forget, it is early days. Daniel Fryker is sort of walking a tight rope at the moment but let's just get behind him and support him. Um, as I'm sure the 1,000 who were at Carrow Road did. But that is everything for this video. If you could like the video, I'd be very, very grateful. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, that'll be super. So until next time, we'll see you again very, very soon.